I all? Can we all relate this image to our continuous integration pipeline? I'm assuming every, every one of us use continuous integration pipeline some or the other way. Can we relate this? Any guesses? No guesses? When I ask this to my friend, she says, it's your life. No, it, uh, it, let's relate it to the continuous integration. Do we now? The truck tire is missing. That's our uh, sorrows about test cases before release. We know that there is a bug, still we release. Or we know that we don't have enough test coverage, still we release. It's one less tire, but truck still runs, and it's fun now. But what happens when you remove one more tire? Is it going to be fun? More? No? Three, three AM calls, right? So that's what this talk is about to be today. We are going to understand how at, uh, at my workplace, more engaged, we try to work on bringing the continuous integration and adding the test coverage as the minimum criteria to actually have the uh, code base pushed to the next pipeline. Uh, before we move on, a brief about me, which is not brief. So I'll just sum up it. Uh, I'm, I find myself an explorer. I have, I have explored a, a multiple uh, range of things in professional and personal life. i had been a developer, a tester, an automation engineer, and I tried trying to learn DevOps things also so that I can uh, fill the gaps between all of these teams basically, and help, which helps us build and ship the healthy product. Personally, uh, I, I, I like to share what I know and learn in return. So I blog about them and record videos on that. And uh, I'm an automation uh, nerd as well as the open source enthusiast. So whichever project I work for my, uh, I use for my work, I make sure to contribute back to it in some or the other way. My uh, latest contributions can be found in Jenkins and automation-related plugins. I'm a big-time foodie and sleep lover, but I use yoga so that my the Hulk inside me doesn't come out. The same, uh, feed, the same secret I told Dr. Banner. That's why you could not see the Hulk in Little Stranger coming out. All right. So this is about me. And uh, so today's talk, we are going to start with why I am talking about this topic. What are the pain points we face? And I see the similarity like you also face. And what are the things we did to solve it? So that comes in the what section, how, what, it, what and how it works. And then how is about you? How can you also integrate in your systems? And Q&A at the end. Sounds fair? Yes? Oh, it's after lunch talk. Yes? All right, so we go with it. So this is, uh, this is the simple data, another pie chart, bar graph. But I'm not going to bore you. I'm going to talk about a very interesting thing here. This chart represents uh, the, uh, the code commits in our system. This I just pulled uh, from our code base. So back then, initial of, initially starting of MoEngage, we had a monolithic repository where we were adding everything in one. Sounds familiar? Everybody starts with that, because that gives us speed and pace to actually add uh, code faster and serve our customer needs faster. Startup story. So that's what we had. But do you see any, any pattern in this, this graph? Year on year. So green bar shows the lines added. Red, red shows the lines deleted. Orange shows the team size at that time. And then you have year on year graph. Do we see any correlation or any pattern here? So we, we grown up exponentially. So we were size 15 and we are 50 contributors. Uh, code contributors. So any pattern you see, code is growing fast, features are going fast, a lot of features are going fast, but there is a pattern reverse. The additions are lesser. What can be the reason? So this is what is interesting uh, about. So one reason is here, so since we understood, okay, monolithic is not going to help us serve better to the customers faster, so we started uh, segregating our services into different pieces. That's one reason you see the less number of lines added in the monolithic code base. But at the same time, you see the deletions are also reaching towards the number of lines added. What is that? 
we are adding a lots of features we are serving customer needs very very fast any custom needs but still the decisions are growing up the reason is because we are rearchitecturing as well we are bringing better uh, coding practices we are bringing better services architecture so that we can serve the same uh, piece faster so that's that's uh, that's something but there is one more point here the point is we already have the code there which you call legacy code we already have the code there now you add a small feature the addition will be less because code is already there so now uh, the problem started occurring the code was transforming addition deletion deletion more addition more things like that everybody uh, relate to it that's where a point came when a single line a developer has to add there will be a big pain point because a single line can break service at any point of at any any point and it has to be tested a lot so i'll give you a summary like how it goes so uh, uh, my tech lead comes to me let's say for example i am a i am a core developer he comes and say that okay what is the timeline to add this feature which practically if i think takes only one uh, one line to change but in reality i see if i change this one line i have to test in several 10 more features it means all 10 more features has to be tested i am afraid to give timeline and my tech lead is like why why does the code frighten you so much and i'm like i'd be a fool if this big giant code has not frightened me up one mistake i'm dead why risk it so this is one common point when you have uh, the code base which is not test covered like we had monolith code and we did not have enough test coverage you can say zero coverage let's say and we actually wanted to add one line we have to test a lot of places one thing and second thing is even to write test cases for them is a difficult choice so i'll come to that point again in the next slides so we wanted to solve this problem and we we thought we were brainstorming what should we do one ideal approach is okay you go and write end to end test cases for everything but are they are they sufficient or are they good enough or can they, can that approach scale and that's where we went to uh, understand what are the best practices so we have seen this slide a lot of times a lot of conferences people talk about it everybody sees it everybody go and pitch in company and what happens it does it work does it work easily any any successful example you just went and said we should do it no if the us smiling faces shows that yes so that's what happened so we we wanted to actually achieve unit test co uh, coverage more than others because they are less expensive more uh, faster and uh, the developer developer gets feedback faster and uh, and so the prog the the entire qa uh, the quality automation uh, works sm more smoother than having only end to end test cases so we wanted to do this we we decided we do this so what we did was like every like like instinct we, we just said everybody that okay we want to do this from now on whatever we code we add we have the test coverage we have the test cases for them unit test cases and have coverage for them that's the approach we took and then the real life happens the good intentions works only when you make mechanism to happen after some time we realize saying doesn't work we did not have enough test coverage still so we st the developer started writing test cases some wrote some did not write and then the people who wrote also they were not enough coverage so now why so we we have to dig down why there is no enough coverage there can be multiple reasons even the person do not know he is into development she is into development she is not thinking about the test cases now so that's that, that that that's kind of challenges were there so we wanted to mitigate this problem so like continuous integration pipeline creation we also thought okay let's go ahead and we also do it so give a context i'll just give you a brief uh, we use github for our version control and uh, uh, we create pull request and we have a uh, pipeline structure where each stage something pass then only it goes ahead so it, it looks like this so we call this uh, a shield where we named it shield shield uh, it's shield task to understand everything and then move ahead so it goes like this so developer creates a pull request the first column 
and it goes into painting state, second column. The third, if any of the checks fails, so we have checks like syntax validation, unit test validation, and in unit test also uh, the test failure or the coverage failure. So we have a benchmarking, if, if is, this is below this, this coverage, it should not go it. So uh, any of this fails, the pull request is marked, uh, marked to be blocked. So it looks like this in real. Uh, so you have the create pull request, it goes into waiting, and the pull request is, if you see here, the, mis the coverage is missing. That is why the pull request gets blocked, you see. So this is how we, we thought, yes, now we can have test coverages, co coverage. The, the pipeline is set. Uh, it automatically works. You create a pull request, the checks run in behind, and keeps reporting to the GitHub again. So we found, OK, yes, this works. This setup works completely, and it's awesome, and we can go ahead. And that's where the reality hits again. Uh, one more challenge. Can anybody guess what can be that challenge? So I'll give you a hint. We talked about legacy code initially. And we are talking about adding test coverage for new code only. Yeah. So it happens so that the, the developer who is adding test coverage for the new code, so let's say I have a pull request which which is having two lines of change. And just, just for example, imagine that there is already existing code of 100 lines. You added two more lines. Your test coverage will say, can it say, if, if you wrote test cases for both of them, can it say 100%? No, because it is contributing to the existing code base. So we have legacy code base for which test cases are not there. and we have new code for which test case is there, but it's still the pull request going into blocked state. All of them. All the pull requests gets into blocked. Again, we hit the same point. Either we bypass the system which we created, we bypass and let it happen. And if that happens, then again, we are losing the point of adding test coverage. So we wanted to again solve this. Okay, how can we improve on the shield process so that we can encourage developers to write uh, test cases for newly added code? Why newly added code only? Because we saw in the first slide, we are already knowing that our code changes, our code is transforming faster. We know that we are removing a lot of code. We are re-architecturing a lot of code. It means everything, every piece, every feature becomes new someday. So we know that if we, are, if we encourage only to add for new, rather than fighting, oh, this is the legacy code, this is not my code, uh, why should I write test cases for it? Without thinking about all these things, we can just concentrate on one thing. Add for what you return. So exactly, so we did. So we saw that we have uh, run checks, and we have a test coverage report. So we added one simple trick. The question itself is answered. The question is, I want to write test cases only for what I added into the system. And your system should detect that and tell me oh, if I missed only in that portion. So that's what we do. Before running checks, we actually save the code diff. And at the end, we parse that diff and parse the coverage report, find the mapping ones, and then generate another report, which, which only talks about the uh, missing coverage in your added code now, which goes like this. So it's, it's, not, it's not beautiful. It's just plain HTML, which is behind the, uh, that check where missing coverage was there. The coverage is missed only in your added code. So this gives us benefit that developers now feel encouraged and uh, they, they feel more ownership basically because they have added that code and they, they, should write, they should be writing test codes for them. And this approach works for us because we know that at some point, all the futures will turn to the new code. So it means every time we will have new code coming in and eventually at, the, at certain interval, we will have everything test covered. So we are using the system from almost a year now, and we, and we reached from uh, almost 20% coverage, we reached to 56 with this approach. And eventually, when all services segregates or code gets re-architectured, we'll have the uh, its coverage complete, complete for the complete code base. That is all I have. 
Uh, so, so this is the how part. How can you build if you want to build? So we have the open source APIs for everything. We just need to connect the dots. GitHub APIs, Jenkins APIs uh, for running the checks in behind, basically. And then we have one more system called Alice, which we created last, last year and open sourced as well, which helps us automatically to talk between these APIs and do let Shield do only the parsing task. So we do not need to build everything together. So the continuous integration system could be built on that tool, which we already had written last year. And there are some things. We have credits for the problems. I always give credits to problems first, because that's why we solve if problem comes. And people, uh, so this idea is originated from uh, multiple people in my company, uh, that we should be at focusing on only the diff coverage. So I give credit to uh, them. Then GitHub APIs, Jenkins APIs, and photo credits, that's all. So this is what I want to end with. 100% coverage is a myth, but at least 60% is better than nothing. That's all. Thank you. So I'm open for the question and answers. Any points you felt that you want to integrate or you want to try it out or you also, you also have problems in a different context, we can have a discussion on that. Hey, Pooja, I can pretty much relate to what you are saying. We are in the similar phase right now. But I want to hear your perspective in terms of functional test coverage. Like, how, what is the coverage at your company? And like, how did, like, is it helping having 100% functional test coverage? Yes, so uh, for us, a problem set is different, different because uh, when you say functional test coverage, is it developer functional or it's end to end? End to end, yes. So, so we are a SaaS company which, uh, which actually the endpoints are uh, not in our context. So it's customers, customers, basically. So we cannot hit the complete endpoint. So that is why 100% end to end is not feasible. So that is why we have broken it down into different pieces. So this is a big problem. But since this problem exists, we are able to follow the good practices. Otherwise, we would have again written up, ended up writing end to end and then struggling to maintain them. So we are focusing on uh, piece by piece individual services. So unit tests should go broader. And then we are work segregating them into uh, different chunks. Like this should go into API test context. And then this should go in the end-to-end uh, -end automation. So end-to-end -end automation, we started and we stopped. So uh, we ag are again going to start that. Uh, but then again, the complete end we will not touch because that's not something out in our context. Am I able to? Yeah, yeah, we can have a further discussion on this. Any more questions? OK. I can't see anybody. Okay, if you don't have, I have a question. How many of have more than 80% coverage? Wow, I should meet you. What's your name? Howell. Okay. Yeah. Unit test coverage end to end or? We are planning to start end to end. Uh, we are planning to start writing end-to-end -end test cases, and I mean, um, I don't have questions on that. But like, what sort of uh, like if you uh, like you guys started it and stopped doing it, so that could be an interesting like uh, story. Why did you stop doing it? Was it creating more hurdles than solving problems? Um, yes, yes. So that's what. Um, so for that, I need to give a brief about what we do. <laughs> so probably this is an offline uh, thing. We we should again get in touch. Yeah. That is all.